Good morning, my friends. I'm Pastor Ben Hayes from First Baptist Church, Dadeville, Alabama, bringing you our thought for the day on this magnificent Monday. Can you believe this weather? It is amazing out there today. I hope you've had a chance to enjoy it, and I hope you enjoyed the weekend. What a great day we had yesterday from beginning to end. Marvelous worship service, recognizing our graduates, um, looking into to that evening for the fish fry. What a what a great time of fellowship. And thank you, men, for uh, putting on such a great uh, party last night with uh, the fried fish and all that went with it. It was good. It was very good. Right now, join me in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 as we continue this journey. I'm going to pick up in verse 12. Now, remember, we're talking about this letter to the church at Corinth. They've got a lot of issues. They've got a lot of d discord, division. Uh, just like I preached yesterday, one of the, the main weapons of the enemy is to sow seeds of discord uh, in the church. And that's what, what happened at Corinth. And um, apparently somebody in Chloe's household, whoever Chloe is, had sent word to Paul that all this was happening. And he said, look, look at verse 12. He says, now I say this, that each of you says, I am of Paul, or I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of Christ. You know, picking up sides. Who's the best preacher? Who's the best pastor? Who's the best teacher? It's not what it's about. Uh, we all have our gifts. We all have our abilities. And we're, we're working together to build the body of Christ. And here's what Paul says, verse 13. Is Christ divided? Absolutely not. Unity is, is, is key in all of this. Was Paul crucified for you? Absolutely not. Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I hope not. Listen, what he's talking about here is it is all about Jesus. He's the one who died on the cross for our sins. He's the one that was buried and rose again. And he is the one in whose name we are baptized. I baptize you, my brother, my sister, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that's key to this. We are not um, fans of men. We are fans of God. We are not committed to a person. We are committed to the Savior. And that's what Paul is talking about here. And if we take our eyes off of human things and, and, and place them on spiritual things, then everything would be so much different, so much better within the church. And look at what Paul says, verse 14. This is where we want to pick up. He says, I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, lest anyone should say that I also had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanas. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. And what he's talking about here is, look, it's not about who gets you into the church. It's not about who baptizes you. It's about proclaiming the truth of the gospel. Paul says that's those, those things are not important. You know, early on in my ministry, I can remember going to, to pastor's conferences and Everybody talking about how many people they baptized. And, uh, you know, that was a big deal. That was a big deal. I baptized 25 people this year. Well, you know, it's good. Those numbers uh, represent people who come to know Christ. But I, I think about those churches where they don't baptize, but maybe one or two. And you think, well, they're, they're not doing their job. But think about who those one or two are. Uh, Billy Graham was actually a product of one of those churches. And when you think about that, the impact that he had on the world through his ministry, and all of that goes back to that, that one person who was baptized in that church who led Billy Graham to faith in, in Jesus Christ. What a powerful truth that is. And Paul is saying, look, it's all about preaching the gospel, not with the wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. What's he talking about here? Well, the power of the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You don't have to try to figure out a fancy way to, to express that. You don't have to try to manipulate people with, with your pers persuasive speech because no matter how persuasive you are, unless the Holy Spirit brings conviction on the hearts of, of men and women, salvation does not happen. It's all about the power of the gospel. That is what changes our lives. Paul says in Romans that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, and the gospel is this— Jesus died for you and me. He gave himself on Calvary's cross so that we could have forgiveness of sin and everlasting life. That is what is important. That is our message. That is our purpose. That is our vision. That is our goal. Get the word out to a lost and hurting world. None of this other stuff 
matters. We need to be about the Father's business. Are you about the Father's business? Look, you don't have to be a pastor, but you do have to be a witness telling people about the love of Christ. Think about that today. Be blessed. I'll see you back here tomorrow.